All right, what's up, peeps, and welcome back to the Lionel B Show. It's your first time tuning into the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the videos, man. Also, make sure y'all click that notification bell button so anytime I drop a brand new video, y'all be the first ones to get it. Now, today we do have an exclusive interview, man, with none other than Anivia Cruz, the beautiful Anivia Cruz. Now, some of y'all may know her from BET's Killer Curve and also Ayala's Fix My Life. Anivia, how are you, love? I'm blessed. How you doing, Lionel? I am doing great. Thank you so much for asking, Anivia. You know, thank you for, for coming on to the show. We just kind of want to clear the air about some of the things that have been going on in social media lately. Now, there is a model, um, an Instagram model out there that, you know, has some issues with some butt injections. And um, they, she was actually brought up on this show with Tasha K. And she was also on my platform as well. And she, uh, there was kind of some things said that you kind of wanted to speak on. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, after hearing your interview with Miss Singh, um, I heard lies on top of lies on top of lies. So again, like after going on Tasha's platform, um, I had just like like I did with you, I reached out to Tasha because I respect her. Um, I love her show. And at first watching it, I was kind of thinking, did she have something to do with this scam when I realized that Miss Thing was a scammer? Um, so I, once I'm paying attention to her, I realized that woman had too much to lose for that little bit of money. So I reached out to her and I wanted to inform her that she had been scammed. And after seeing your interview, and I feel that you were so open and to let this young lady come on and speak her piece after so many people knew she was a liar and a scammer, you gave her a chance, just like I gave her a chance, just like Tasha gave her a chance. And I needed to reach out to you to let you know this girl lied through her teeth on that interview on your platform. Gotcha. All right, Anivia, so when you say she, she lied, what parts were the actual lies? Can you remember um, exactly what kind of jumped out at you? Okay, well, there were a couple things. First of all, how she portrayed uh, Dr. Gallerani's office. That's number one. Um, that office, I have a lot of respect for them. No, I'm not on their payroll. No, I am not yet one of their patients. None of that. I am just speaking from an honest place, just like when I went on Tasha Case. Um, so I cleared Kay Michelle's name and get body by Jay's name, and those aren't my friends. But if I know something to be a lie and I know the truth, I'm going to tell it. Um, she's basically been threatening that office. It's her saying that they act like used car salesmen, they pressure you. Those were lies. That office is so warm and so welcoming. They're loving. You feel like a family setting when you go in there. And that was bold faced lies for her to tell on those people because she got exposed. She used them. So that she could, and she said to them, which they can't speak on, but I can. She told them, I need a surgery date. She pressed them for a surgery date. They impressed her. Well, I need one so I can put it on my GoFundMe so I know what to, to, put to get my GoFundMe money. She's a liar. So, so basically, um, so there was no actual amount. So pretty, it was pretty much like, okay, I, I need to have a quote. So... What was the what was the holdup in terms of giving the quote? When you say she was pressuring them, like in what way? Well, for starters, when she started her GoFundMe, she had never even been to Galilani yet, and I had given I had said first she had her GoFundMe set at some thousands, and I said, sweetie, a surgery is going to cost a lot more than that. Uh -huh. Where are you quote from? So then she kept raising, and if I'm lying, tell people to go back and check the facts. She kept raising her GoFundMe. And I said, what doctor are you getting these quotes from to get a GoFundMe to get a surgery? Where are you getting these quotes from? What doctor? She had never had an MRI. She had never had blood work or CT scan or even seen a plastic surgeon. So how do you know how much to set a GoFundMe for? 
if you never even saw a plastic surgeon to give you a surgical cold. I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying, Nelly. So, so kind of t- take us um, through an example of how the GoFundMe is set up now. Is it that when you have like medical procedures or things like that, is it that you have to present the paperwork to GoFundMe in order for them to honor no. the total or how does that work? No, you can just set it up. You just set it up. You have to have a Facebook. You just set your GoFundMe up. Mm-hmm. Um, but with her case, people were recording her for fraud. So she had to show proof. But she was telling people that she needed this money to go to Dr. Gallerani. She jumped on there, made sure she took pictures with Gallerani. I've been to see Gallerani for a consultation. You never see a picture with me and him. Uh, you know, I, right. I, Janelle went, but she took pictures because she had surgery with him. And Janelle, Janelle is the uh, is Body by Jay. Is that the Janelle? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. Miss Singh had to make it her business to jump and take a picture with Gallerani so she could post it, so she could get her money, so she could get donations. It's all. It was all calculated. It was all fake. This girl came to me. I was defending her tooth and nail. But when I realized this girl had never had an MRI, never had a CT scan, and then I said one day she's in the kitchen cooking oodles and noodles, I said, wait a minute. All the time I'm talking to you, you're not in the hospital? The girl was never in the hospital. So so basically, so she was pro- kind of pretty much moving around, and you, you were basically led to – believe that she was actually on her dying bed that she was pretty much going to die and she was really in, in dire straits yes and when i realized this girl was lying a couple things when she said oh um it's traveling at my back i'm going to die i need this surgery so i said well what did the mri say she said oh i didn't have an mri how the hell do you know you're dying without an mri right i still see these scans no, she said something like she's supposed to get it done with her primary care. First of all, you go to a hospital and you tell them you have butt injections. The first thing they're going to do is give you an MRI, CT scan, and blood work. Yeah. She said, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have the blood work results yet. So how do you know you're dying? So I asked her, what landed you in the hospital? What made you go? You can't get nothing over on me. I know how this goes. Let me see if she's going to tell me one of the, one of the, 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 you know, the symptoms that put her there. Yeah. Oh, I had a boil and I, and I went to the hospital. I said, a boil? And you see her naked ass all over the internet charging people to see her do web shows, but I don't see no boil. I don't see no, no scar, nothing from a boil. So what landed you in that hospital? And then the final straw, we were supposed to go live. I said, listen, I'm tired of these people writing me. Saying you're a scammer, I'm defending you every day, posting stuff, let's go live. Let's clear your name once and for all. I'm going to ask you certain questions. When you answer them, we're going to prove that you're telling the truth. The day we were supposed to go live, she DMs me and says, call me on this different number. Oh, my phone broke, it shattered. I can't go live. I said, well, you hit me on Instagram on this phone. This phone, just go live on this. Oh, no, this is my son's Android. The camera's bad. I said, who gives a damn about a camera? We're trying to clear your name. Right. Who cares about that? And then I'm having a conversation with her. She said that her phone had broken. And I said, well, you're on the phone now. You just contacted me on Instagram. So why can't you use that phone? She says, oh, this is my son's Android and the camera's bad. So I'm like, girl, who cares about a camera? We're trying to clear your name from people saying you scamming. And, and like, what are you talking about? who cares and she said she would call me back and i we i didn't speak to her for a couple of days so so after she didn't call you back was that kind of like the end of everything y'all didn't really speak y'all were no longer on good terms no we spoke again after that but that kind of raised a red flag and then it turned into you know what anivia don't even bother defending me anymore i'm gonna let god handle it i don't owe these people any explanation i'm not defending myself i'm like what these people are sitting here talk, calling you scammers a whole there's a whole blog out here that's destroying you and you're saying leave it alone like what okay all right then i'll do that um but that was a red flag 
And then also when I told her about a specific doctor um, and I said, I wouldn't suggest this doctor. I appreciate this doctor. I love him. He saved my life. But the outcome is not what I'm happy with. Um, and, you know, to Dr. Gallerani is your best choice. And he's your cheap. He's the cheap. He's the most affordable. And he's the most knowledgeable and the best in the game. This other doctor charges a lot more than him, but he takes insurance. Right after I said this, literally, right after I stopped talking, he goes, oh, I'm probably just going to go see doctor such and such and such out in such and such and such. The same doctor I had just told her seconds before not to go to. I said, this girl isn't even listening to me. This girl is playing with me. So that was my final straw. The whole no MRI, no CT scan, no blood work. What the reason she claimed she landed in the hospital, the fact that she was not in the hospital all this time we're talking and she's allegedly dying. Then she didn't want to go live. And then the whole doctor thing. And I said, okay, wait a minute. Now you begging people to give you money, but you're banking on going to a doctor that takes insurance. All right. Something don't smell right. Okay, so basically, when you say the doctor that um that actually doesn't take insurance, no, the doctor that she decided to go to does uh-huh. take insurance, which oh. means you don't need to go fund me if you go into the doctor. But at this point, she had raised all this money. Now you want to go to the doctor that takes insurance. So and with I the I'm sorry. No, you, you're fine. With the insurance, is there any type of copay that, that has to be out of pocket, or how does that how does that work for that? Now, here's the thing: I actually didn't have a copay, um, but now seeing her um, her bill, she has a copay of twenty seven hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to the doctor and you always want to jump and take pictures with these doctors and all this stuff, so now if you're going to this doctor that takes insurance, it's going to cover your whole surgery. And you only got to pay twenty seven hundred dollars, which you still had to go fund me up there for to to raise your fifteen thousand. And when you if you do if you go back on the date, do you, do the research. Anybody who's listening to this, I want you to go back on the date. Anybody who thinks that or has has any doubt on what I'm saying, if you look at the date she put up her 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 GoFundMe, she had not been to any plastic surgeon, Gallerani included. She started a GoFundMe before she had ever seen a surgeon. The, 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 her donation amount kept going up. Every time she talked to me, it, she would raise it higher and higher and higher. Finally, she went to go see Gallerani at least a month and some change after she had the GoFundMe up there. When she went to Gallerani, it was, oh, I need a date because I need to have it for my GoFundMe. I need a date. I need a date. Those people do not act like used car salesmen at all. There is such a family unit in that office. They are like a warm family. So there's, so there's, there's no like high pressure sales tactics or anything like that to get surgery. No. no. Now let me tell you something. If there's a case where you need it out immediately and there's a problem, they're going to let you know, like you need to get this out within the next such and such amount of time. Like in my case, they have mm-hmm. to go back over and fix all the mistakes, but it's not a it wasn't a dire emergency situation. So they just told me, you know, let us know when you want to do the surgery. It's kind of like on my time. And Marianne said, well, you know, if you want to lock in the date, because I had expressed to her, I don't want to be in the hospital during the summer. I want to do my surgery while it's cold. So yeah. Marianne kindly reached back out and said, hey, Nivy, I know you said you probably want to do your surgery around February. These are the dates we have available. Whatever date you want to lock in. That's when you just pay your down payment and we'll lock that date in for you. But yeah, so I'm just letting you know that these are the winter dates that we have available. And it was that simple. Gotcha. It was okay. that simple. So there's no, there's no like constant emailing. There is no, no, there's none of that from the doctor's office. Let me tell you, now, let me tell you the difference. Now, that makes sense of this. Okay. If you press the doctor and press them and press them and press them I need a date. I need to get, I need to put a date up. I need to say a date. I need the date because why? Because you're trying to put a date up there so that you can hurry up and have people donate to you. So you can say you got a deadline. Okay. So if you're pressing these doctors, they don't know you're scamming. They don't know what you're doing. 
you're pressing them. I need a date. I need a date. I need a date. And you're driving them crazy. And then they, they feel like you, you're, you're in a sense of, you have a sense of urgency. So after you do that, they're going to be getting back to you. Okay, honey, we got this date for you. Do you want it? You pressed us. You were so aggressive to us about this date. Okay, so now we're calling. If you want this date, you need to put down your down payment. We can't hold this date off and there's girls that really want surgery and need it and have the money and we holding this date for you. You got it. Not like anywhere. You got to put down your down payment. Right. So, so you pretty much, you know, put your deposit down if you want your services. Yes, especially if you're pressing us. Yes. Gotcha. Now, now there were some some things that that kind of came out um, in the particular interview was kind of saying that, uh, you know, someone was uh, in touch with your mother and, and they were, you know, saying things about that. What what do you what do you say uh, in response to that? First of all, no one has ever been in touch with my mother. My mother is a very private, very shy woman. The only reason my mother even went on Iyanla Fix My Life is because my mother thought that Iyanla was going to help with my butt surgery and actually save my life. That is the only reason my mother went on that show. My mother is a very quiet woman that lives in a little tiny town and lives a very boring square life. My mother is in a religious college. My mother does not get involved with any of that stuff. So what she made reference to about how my mom said I was manipulative and I, if I don't get my way, I go crazy. Let me tell you something. Iyala was filmed back in 2014 and it aired in 2015. At the time, I was a very damaged, very hurt, painful. I was just a mess. I was on the show with this big, painful butt that I was on pain meds. And what a lot of people don't know, I had gotten addicted to pain medication because I had to be on it around the clock. Not only that, I was going, I was in the middle of a breakup. I was living with my boyfriend during filming and we were great. We had broken up maybe a day or two before I left to go film Ianla. And then I get there, I'm in dire pain. Miss Ianla and I were not getting along. They edited that show a lot. You know how edits go. But my mom was telling the truth. I was angry. I was bitter. I was mad at the damn world because I was holding this deep, dark secret that Miss Ianla helped me reveal at the end of the show which was the fact that I cannot have children of my own. And all my best friends, some of my family members, did not know that until the show aired. Because that is a secret that I carried with me all my life. And that's a heavy load for any little girl at 17 years old to carry all the way through her adult years. And have to hide from every relationship, have to hide it from her friends. And you feel like you're not, you're not enough. And that's the reason I did that to my butt because I had body dysmorphic disorder, because my ovaries disappeared at 13, which means I didn't develop like all the other girls. So I had a lot of psychological things I was dealing with. And by yeah. the grace of God, I've overcome all of that. I've overcome it, and I'm a different woman now. I'm 37 years old now. So at the time, yes, I was angry. The average woman probably would have killed herself if she was in my shoes. Yeah. But she don't but she's making reference to me for 2014. Come on, let's be for real. Now, Nivia, do you feel like in hindsight, looking back, do you feel like a Yanla actually fixed your life? I will say this. I am so grateful that she gave me because I fought with her about revealing that on the show. I fought tooth and nail since the beginning up since the show started when she made me write it down. I am so grateful that she had me release that burden off my chest. Because now it's something I never in a million years would have dreamt, dreamt of doing. Like people say to me, do you have kids? You don't have no kids, you're 37. I'm like, no, why you don't have no kids? I said, well, I can't have any. I would have never in a million years ever thought I would so comfortably say that or, or stand on podiums and speak to women that are really dealing with that every day and helping and coaching them through how to live with that. So in my, that, I turned that pain into triumph and I thank her because had she not done that, I would have been still holding that dark secret. I never would have been open about it. And for that, I thank her forever. Being older than, than you were back then, because I mean, that was about four or five years ago. 
how do you, how do you present that to people now? Is it easier to speak now that, you know, you're not able to have children? Does it still hurt as bad or is it a little bit easier to manage now? I still break down. I still cry about it, especially now at 37, all of my friends have children. And mm-hmm. let's be honest, we got grandmas my age now. Like I say to some, sometimes when I talk to teenagers and stuff, I say, honey, I could be a grandma. Don't be disrespectful. I could, this day and age, I could be somebody's grandma and I don't even have a baby of my own. So I do break down off, not, not that often, but I have my moments. But what helps me get through it is when I'm able to speak to a group of women that are not able to get through it and they need my strength for it. So I'm able to deal with it. And then there's options I plan on. And I look at Gabrielle Union and, and, and certain women, you know. Right. Using I surrogates and things like that? Well, I'm, I can carry, but I just can't conceive. I can have okay. IVF. Yeah, I plan on having IVF. So you can still go through the same experience and, you know, get to get to have that have that experience as, you know, most women. Yeah, yeah, because my partner and I have talked about it. And that's something that I really want to do that I'm support. I'm, I'm being supported on it. But how are we going to do it? We just, that's the question right now. Gotcha. Uh, also, Anivia, well, tell us a little bit about how Killer Curves changed your life. So, I mean, you, okay, so you're, you're, you know, your picture went viral. Um, you had, you know, you had a bad surgery. Your picture went viral. Um, and then I believe from there it was Ayanla, right? And then it was Killer Curves? Yeah, Ayanla first. Uh-huh. Then the picture went viral. And then, no, excuse me, Ayanla first. Mm-hmm. And then I hit curves, and then the picture went viral. Oh, so the picture went viral after you were on those shows. Yeah, because I didn't, um, the producers didn't want me to release the pictures. Now, they did show the pictures on Killer Curves, but people didn't really catch a grip of it. And one day I was sitting at home, and um, I was like, I feel like, you know, I'm getting all these emails, I'm getting these messages, and BET is sending me um, testimonies that people are sending, like how Killer Curves changed their lives. And I was like, I feel, I don't feel like it, I got that dynamic. I really need it. Like, I really need to grab these people. What do I do next? And I said, you know what? And it, it was so, it was so impulsive that I didn't even watermark the picture. Um, and it was when the game posted it that it just went crazy. And I just posted it. And I never thought it would go viral. Wow. And within minutes, that by the end of 24 hours i had gained 10,000 followers wow from and that wasn't even watermarked so when so when you put the photo out there was it was it embarrassing or or were you more like okay i want to show you people the the dark side of butt injections it was hard um the harder part was when i had to show my butt on killer curve it took a lot of me sitting down with the producer because i went to college with him actually so that's oh, wow. why we developed the show together. Um, it was rough. That was harder. Showing the butt busted open. It took a little breathing, and it, it was just kind of like, all right, all right, I got to do this. You know, I just remember the greater cause of it all. It's, it, you know, it's not about vanity anymore. It's not about me anymore. It's I got to look at my mission, and I got to look at what I'm doing. So if it if it comes at the cost of me being so-called embarrassed then I just have to be but what's more important a person's life or my pride right that's true a lot of people dead right now because of pride a person's life is so much more important some child's mother saving her life is so much more important than me being embarrassed that people looking to see what I look like now I don't care I have someone that loves me and I don't care that's very true now Nivia t- tell some of the the listeners, um, kind of what you've experienced. Now, I know, you know, there's different parts of your body that it affected, affected as well. Not only, you know what I'm saying, your rear end, but other parts, other organs. Tell our, our listeners a little bit about what happened to you. Um, I've developed in-stage kidney disease, in-stage renal failure, excuse me, stage four kidney disease, in-stage renal failure. By the grace of God, I never had to get on dialysis. Um, it traveled all the way down to my ankles. My legs are like dark. They're darker than my skin color. Um, it got in my lymph nodes. When Marianne was talking about that, she didn't say that was me she was talking about. 
Um, it travels inside my left nose. I suffer with severe kidney stones. Um, it's up my back. It got it traveled up my back into my spinal area. Um, it's all down my hips. Uh, it's in my knees. It's in my joints. It just migrated everywhere on my lower extremity. Now, now, do you still actually go through pain, or is it has it kind of subsided? Okay, so my butt, you, I used to feel pain constantly. It was constant pain, throbbing and needles. I have no pain in my butt anymore, and that's what I try to tell women. The thing about nerves is nerves are funny. You never know what they're going to do. Um, sometimes you can remove things and, you know, and the nerve pain will stop. Or sometimes mm-hmm. the nerves can be so severely damaged that you still experience pain. I only get pain in my butt when I sit too long at the bottom where there's still uh, some silicone. Now, my feet are damaged. I cannot drive. Um, I have to take a neurological test with a neurologist. Um, and I only get to take it once. If I fail, I have to go through that, all this physical therapy and all that and take it again next year. So, so when you say you aren't able to drive, is it something like you said your feet being messed up? Like, what does that, what does that mean? The nerves in my feet are so damaged that my feet are constantly throbbing. I have to mm. take, I'm on gabapentin for the rest of my life. So sometimes I get like um, spurts in my feet. So like I could be driving and I just get a, a pain spurt and I may slam on the gas and run into the, in the back of someone. Oh man. It's involuntary. Um, a lot of my shoes I can't wear anymore. Um, it, it's just a lot of pain because so many surgeries, you know, that's nerves and they travel. So it's referred pain. So my toes, my feet are always ice cold and numb. Um, and they're just damaged. And that's where I do, like when I lay down at night, that's when I feel the most pain in my feet because of the circulation issues. Yeah. Now you do have an upcoming surgery now with, with this upcoming surgery, is this going to actually alleviate any of those symptoms you're having or is it mainly just to remove more silicone? Yeah. Well, my surgery on the 14th, I'm actually just having an injury because it's kind of a small surgery that my insurance is paying for it. So I'm just going to go and have it done. But my major surgery, I am definitely going to Gallerani. I'm not messing around with anyone else for for my (laughs) butt anymore. Um, Because he's the only one that can actually reconstruct me and make it look normal again. Um, But this upcoming surgery is just to take the um, out of my lymph nodes and to help. It'll help eliminate a lot of the kidney stones. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's like, uh, you know, it'll be like a C-section cut and they're just going to cut it out of the the lymph nodes. Like this, because there's silicone inside of my lymph nodes. Oh man! Because I don't want to take the risk of ha- having lymphatic cancer or having to lose my lymph nodes. So this was a it, a surgery that I chose to have because I don't want it to get worse in the future. So this was something that I I chose to have. It wasn't something that they said I had to have. What is your relationship like with your family now? I mean, I know you, you definitely did a, a a major 360 from where you were years ago. And I can I can understand now with you being on the Ayala show. I mean, you're not feeling good, like you said. Your your ass is hurting like a mother. Like I don't know who could sit there and be in a good mood when you're in pain. So I, I definitely understand it now. It makes a lot more sense now. But in terms of your family, your sisters, and all of them, like how are you guys today? Uh, my sisters and I are amazing. Um, my one sister that I got into it with on the show, the little brown one, my baby, she's a mom. She's married. Um, and after my surgery, she actually flew me to, she paid for my flight, my little sister, flew me to Charlotte and just really helped me get back on my feet to get back in the groove of life. Um, That's dope. Baby sister, yeah, yeah, definitely. She came through. Uh, my baby sister was still very close. My sister with the big hair. We have our we have our qualms, but we're very close. My sisters and I, um, we've always been very close. Um, my mom and I, we go up and down. Um, my mom and I, our issues go back a lot further than the butt. My mom and I are only 18 years apart, and I deal with a lot of feeling. My mother has a lot of resentment. For me, for you know, her life not being where it is. So, my mom and I definitely need therapy beyond beyond her. 
So, so were you, are, were you the first kid? Is that kind of why things were that way? Yeah, it was very hard. Um, mm. To be honest with you, my mother was very abusive when I was a child. And I'm not, not to bash her. Mm -hmm. You know, she was young. We lived in the project. My mom had six kids by the time she was 30 by three different men. So it was hard for her. And now that I'm older, you know, I look at her and I, I, I thank her and I say, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I would have ever. I couldn't imagine at 37 having two kids, let alone six. And living in the projects and being on welfare, she had it hard. So, you know, she was going through her battles and trying to raise us. And it was hard for her. So I understand now, but those scars are still there. So we, we have our moments. We have good moments and we have bad. So I can't say we're bad or good. Right now, mm -hmm. currently, I'm blocked. Oh, no. Oh no, we gotta do better. No, 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 we got to do better. But I know, I know it's kind. Of, I know it's pretty much common, man. I mean, I know a lot of um, you know women they get into it with their moms. I don't know it's because you know both of y'all are females or what generally happens with that. And it's usually like, okay, the the son is cool with the mom, and but sometimes with with two women, man, like they just y'all just it's kind of sometimes hard to coexist. It is. It is, and we're so different. We're so so different we're like night and day be different and maybe the same in some ways and that's probably you know maybe you guys are a little stubborn with each other you think what it is is my mom was just never affectionate and mm. me being the oldest um my grandmother pretty much raised me and she was very affectionate and very loving so you know i would go from my grandma's house where i'm technically like an only child me and my older cousin and I'm getting everything. She buys me everything, kisses me, hugs me, loves me, tell me I'm beautiful. And then I go home to my mom and it's cold and she doesn't buy me anything. And I get whooped more than I'm told I'm loved. I was, I, my, my mom never even I heard her say she loved me until I was nine. I never Man. got a hug or a kiss from my mother until I was a teenager. So I know I got my first hug from her at nine and I love you at nine. And I think she kissed me. And she told me I was, I heard her tell someone I was beautiful. I was about 32. Oh, man. So it was rough. rough. Do you feel like, you know, not having that affection and not having her say these things, do you think it affected your relationships once you got older? Um, well, what I did was because I got that love and affection from my grandmother, I would come home and pour it onto my siblings because I didn't want them to ever feel like, I felt I didn't want them to ever feel not loved. I wanted them to know what affection was like. So I would kiss them to death and hug them. So, so to this day, it's six of us. It's two boys and four girls. And we're all grown. And mm -hmm. we get in the bed. Like to this day, we all get in the bed. We cuddle with each other. We talk to each other. We talk baby talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, we're very affectionate with each other. And That's dope. I, didn't, I never wanted them. Yeah, my, my siblings and I. We're very close. Like we were very close, very close. I'm more like their mother than I am. Just, like my mom can have a boyfriend all she wants, but let me get in a relationship. They act like life is over and they're gonna die. So yeah, I'm the mom. They don't want to lose that attention from me. They're like, hey, where you going? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, come on, don't do this to me. Now, also, also Nivia, I mean, because I, I feel like this is definitely, you know, it's definitely great information putting out there. And I'm pretty sure it's going to help someone out uh, somewhere. Thank now, um, no problem, man. So if there was one thing you would want to tell your mom if she were to listen to this interview and just let's say the world was going to end today. And if there was one thing you would want to tell her, what would you say to her? I just needed you. That's all I did. I just needed you. I needed you. That's all I can really say to her because I said everything I can say to her. And it's like, you know, people like what Miss Thing was trying to say, my mom said, I'm manipulative and I don't get my way. You know, kids learn that behavior when they're trying to get their mother's attention. Um, kids are going to do anything. Sometimes you will act out to get your ass whooped just to get your mother's attention. And I got my ass whooped. I got beat belt buckles to the face. All, I got cut with a butter knife. Like, I got war. Damn. But I would still want my mother's attention. And my mother's argument always is, 
oh, the problem is she just, she's very affectionate and I'm not affectionate. You know, that's not an excuse. Right. So I'm, I'm 37 and I don't have never had what people have when they, they, things go wrong or they get scared or they go through a heartbreak and they say, I just want my mommy. I just, I, I've never had that. It's always been, I want my grandma. So, you know, it's, it, so when Miss Thing said what she said, she should have did her research a little bit more and had you rewind and watch a little bit more clip of the show to understand the relationship between me, my mom and I and why my mom says that because she does play victim sometimes. So you should never, one thing you don't play with is people's families. And that's why I called in because Miss Thing crossed the line. Now I sat quiet and I said nothing after we went on Tasha's show. And I, my whole purpose of going on Tasha's show was to clear that woman's name because that's a hardworking woman and it's not fair for some trash to come on there and possibly make that woman lose everything she worked for. Yeah. So when Miss Thing brought her behind on your show and wanted to make mention to my family, and, and so jabbed that what she didn't know what she didn't know anything about, or we got a problem. We have a problem. And to say that someone reached out to my mother, never. My mother is quiet. My mother is shy. Yeah, she beat my ass, but my mother is very quiet. She's timid. Like, you know, never. Uh -huh. Man. She just, yeah, she's a villain when it comes to me, but not to the rest of the world. Everyone actually loves my mother. All of our friends, they were like, I don't get how you don't get along with her. Everyone loves her. My mom would never, ever. She doesn't gossip. She's into the church. Never. She changed a lot. Yeah. So don't lie. Don't play with, don't play with my family now. Now, I can get into it with her and tell her about herself and have her block me, but don't play with me. Don't play with my mother. Don't play. Don't come on here making mention of my family. You know nothing. She better worry about her mother who she slept with her mother's husband, that's what she better worry about. She better worry about her relationship she tarnished with her own mother. Oh, that's pretty deep. That's pretty yeah. deep. So, okay, so Nivy, so just um, kind of tell us a little bit about what do you have coming up in the future? I know, you know, you got the, you know, you did uh, Ayala's Fix My Life, you did Killer Curves, you got a book out um, com coming as well, or you have a book that you're putting out currently? Yeah. I have a book coming out. My book would have been done, but I am so dedicated to making sure that I'm here for women when they need me, when they need to talk, um, and when they need advice, and when they just need me to walk them through their surgical process. So my book is called Scar Tissue. It will be out this summer. I promise. It will be out this summer. Okay. Um, we were working on Killer Curve. We were going to do a Killer Curve 2. But unfortunately, another show got greenlit, so we're not doing it. Um, but I do have something else I'm working on, but I don't want to speak on it right now. And I still travel the country speaking to women and young girls. Um, I'll be at CIAA for the Media Girls on Tour. Um, I'll be speaking there. So you can go to my Instagram and get that, those details. But I just want to tell women that my life is dedicated to this mission. Um, I don't have embarrassment. I do not regret doing the butt injections. Like I explained that had I not done them, there would be no killer curves probably. Had I not done them, that Iana episode might not, would not have happened. Mm -hmm. um, had I not gotten the butt injections, it could have been somebody's mom that would have not gotten them because of killer curves that went and got them and died and left her children behind. So I don't regret one minute of it. If I had to do it over again, Lord knows it was hard as hell. The process, the healing, the month in the hospital, two months in the nursing home, learning to walk again, being 120 pounds at five, ten and a half, a month, seven months with bandages with my butt all the way open down to the muscle. If I had to do it again, I would for the sake of saving somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, somebody's sister, I would do it again. That's deep. That's a, that's a major sacrifice, too. It, it, it's my calling. It's what I'm here for. Now, Anivia, we definitely appreciate you, baby girl, for being on our platform here at the Lionel B Show. 
And in closing, is there anything else you want to say to, to anyone out there that's listening on YouTube? Because of course, everybody's going to have something to say. People are going to be comparing notes. You know how I go down. So is there anything you want to leave them with? I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. My whole goal, like I said from the beginning, was to reach out to Tasha and let Tasha know what happened to her, what this girl did to her, that she, and, and, and help this woman not to lose her name and people to think that she was in on that scam with that girl. My whole purpose of coming on your show is because this girl used your platform to tell bold faced lies. So I wanted to come on and let you know she used you just like she used me, just like she used Tasha for her scam. And it wasn't fair that your platform was used for those lies. So people don't have to believe me. I'm not here for that. After I went on the Tasha show, I didn't speak out about anything else. I didn't do the back and forth. This girl was threatening Dr. Gallerani's office, calling them, telling mm -hmm. them she's come down there, sending them threatening emails, all types of stuff. I kept quiet. I won't be, I haven't reposted anything, but this girl used your platform to come on and try to sabotage my name and tell lies again that someone reached out to my mom. No. So I don't, I honestly, whoever doesn't believe me, I don't care. But I, I would like any woman that needs to speak to me, my DMs are always open. I respond to every single DM. I do not leave any of them unread. It takes me a little while to get to them sometimes. But I am here for you. My life is dedicated to you. I don't care who believes me and who doesn't. Speaking of Dr. Gallerani, we do have Marianne on the line as well, right? Yes, she is. Okay, so um, right right after, we'll go ahead and, uh, and bring her on the line so she can kind of tell us a little bit about you know what exactly happened on that particular day and what's what's real and what's not so um again anivia we definitely thank you for being on the lionel b show i'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to marianne thank you lionel all right you welcome thank you for rocking with the lionel b show god bless you god bless you too we do have marianne on the line here marianne yes i'm here hey how you doing i'm doing well thank you all right, no problem. So yeah, we just um just a few questions uh for you as well. Um and are you you know are you aware of that patient that she's actually speaking about? Um I, I can't uh, divulge HIPAA, but yes, mm -hmm. I've been aware of that situation. Okay. Now does your doctor's office does do they actually take any uh type of copays or is it strictly like a cash payment? No. But let me explain how we work and I want to be very clear. Okay. We never uh, we, we're here to perform a service for the patients to remove illegal silicon injection. Dr. Gallerani is the number one in the world for removing it. He is an expert at doing it. We do thousands every year. He's been doing it for 15 years. He is the expert. When patients do call us up, uh, they have to pay a consultation fee of $300, which gets credited back to them off of the cost of the surgery once the surgery is booked and paid for. They are also required, whether it's in their face or their breast or their body or their gluteus, um, the buttocks, to get an MRI. Uh, the MRI will show the doctor exactly what is on the inside, uh, where it's migrated to, and how difficult of a surgery it will be for him to remove it. Uh, some of these ladies have already tried to remove it in the inexpensive way. Um, and trying to do it with lipo, which only makes it worse and compounds the complexity of it for the doctor to remove it. So when they come in with the MRI, the doctor spends a couple of hours. And I will tell you, I did uh, hear the young lady say that uh, there was only a 30-minute consultation with Dr. Gallerani. That is incorrect. Doctor spends an hour and a half to two hours with everyone. He takes his time. It's not a rush job. He makes sure that the patient completely understands. Uh, then a quote is given for surgery. Uh, and everyone's surgery is individualized. Whether the surgery is for one hour, if they have it in a minor area, or whether the surgery could be for three, four, five, six hours. We have to calculate uh, the degree of difficulty for the doctor, which is his fee, and okay. then the hospital fee, and the hospital fee is charged per hour 
in the operating room and an overnight stay. All of our patients typically stay one night in the hospital. We've had a few patients that come from overseas that like to stay two nights because they're here by themselves. Um, but everybody's up walking around the next day and they come to the office for all their follow-up. But I will clarify to you how we work. Once you choose the date of surgery, so when people come to the front desk and I give them the price, if they, we say to them, you know, call us when you're ready. Mm -hmm. This is a big decision for you. It is a lot of money. We understand that. You need to be prepared mentally. You need to be prepared physically. What I mean by that is they have to have full preoperative clearance, which okay. is an EKG, chest X-ray, blood lab work. They have to be cleared by their doctor. Some people have to be cleared by the pulmonologist, which is a, a chest doctor for their breathing. Mm -hmm. Other people need to also be cleared by a cardiologist. We make sure that the patient is ready for surgery. We never rush anybody into surgery. So when the person comes to my front desk and they say, you know, when's your next day for surgery? And I say, okay, we have these choices. We have February, we have March, we have April, we have May, we have June, you know, July, August. No, no, no. I want the first day available. Okay. When you choose your day, you have to put down a non-refundable deposit. Why? I have to call the hospital. I have to order medication. I have to get a team together. And then I take the doctor off the surgery schedule for anybody else, and that becomes your day of surgery. So when they're insistent at the front desk of a specific date, and they tell me, oh, can you give me 48 hours so I can move money around, mm -hmm. and I will call you with the down payment. Sure, I don't rush anybody to surgery. I'm not a pushy person. I was kind of hurt and insulted that you called me a used car salesman or a debt collector, of which I am not. And anyone who knows Dr. Gallerani and myself will, will gladly say that I'm not that way. Mm -hmm. You never push anyone into surgery. So the patient chooses a day of surgery, and then we give a courtesy phone call or, or we give an email. Paula, my assistant, sent a couple of emails because we had another patient that wanted to pay the $5,000 deposit for that particular day. She is on a time frame. She works. Uh, this other patient works. Uh -huh. Those are the only days she had off. So I gave the young lady you're talking about quite a few opportunities to, to either take the day of surgery or not. And then the other days that she wanted were taken. So the next day I had was August. Okay. We are very fair to the patients. We're very honest people. You know, this is not, Dr. Gallerani went to school. He went to medical school. He, he did six years of residency in general surgery. He did trauma. He did cardiothoracic. He did neurosurgery. He did all of that before becoming a plastic surgeon. He is mm -hmm. at the top of his game. We, we do, you know, a lot of people say, oh, why don't you do this for free and help these women because they're hurt themselves? Let me tell you, we do over 30 pro bono surgeries a year, but it's not for the silicone removal. We do pro bono surgeries for breast cancer patients. Why? I had breast cancer, not once, but twice. Mm -hmm. We do pro bono surgeries where a patient can't afford to get their rib cage fixed after a car accident or a crush injury on a motorcycle. We do many, many pro bono surgeries. So when someone comes to me that elected to, you know, we don't judge. They mm -hmm. were talked into it. They, they put these shots in there for whatever reason, because they were working and they needed a bigger butt or they did it for cultural reasons. We don't judge, but don't say to me, well, you should be helping me out because I, I'm dying from this. No, you're not dying from it. Okay. So, so is, you, so you are, may be in pain. So, are you are, are you yeah. indicating indicating that someone actually told you that you should be doing it for free? 
Because I'm, I'm a little lost Many on that part. Many people have said that to me. Many oh, okay. people have said gotcha. that to me, that Dr. Gallerani should be helping these women for free. Well, just like you're in business, we're in business. Right. You know, he had his medical school loans to pay, mm-hmm. and we work very hard. Gotcha. We work over 80 hours a week. Mm-hmm. I don't know about anybody else, but we see patients 7 o'clock in the morning till 7.30 at night. We see patients on Saturday and Sunday for follow-up. We're always there for our patients. We're not the doctor's office that says, have surgery and we'll see you in a month. No, we see you every day until we discharge you from the surgery. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to clear that up. mm -hmm. There's there's no pushing patients into surgery. Uh, Everyone has to have a full clearance. Um, you know, a lot of these places that are, are quote unquote taking it out through laser, laser, cold laser, liposuction, uh-huh. they go, they don't even meet the doctor. They, they meet a staff member who says, oh, yeah, sure, here's the quote, and you'll meet the doctor the day of the surgery. No, We're, we do the right thing for the right patient, the right surgery at the right time. <laughs> And people say that we're very expensive. Well, I will tell you, there are many doctors around the country that are charging triple what we're charging. And Nivea can attest to this. You know, our patients, we don't accept insurance for this. We do this under Medici Institute. We do not accept insurance. You pay, and then you move on to a good, happy life. It's removed. And Dr. Gallerani gets between 90 and 98% of it out we can never guarantee 100%. Now, now Marianne, there was a, um, also a claim made uh, that uh, this particular patient's, um, you know, bill was a lot higher than other people that was, I guess, initially quoted. Is that, is that true? It, that's or? incorrect. That's incorrect. The, everyone's surgery is different. So just say you had butt injections and you came in. But now uh, you did something to make it worse or uh, you've had it for quite a few years and you've had a reaction. The MRI is the roadmap to surgery. That tells doctor how many hours in the operating room and how difficult it is. If you've been injected, some people are injected once, some people are injected four times. We had a woman, she was injected 11 times, 11 different times. We've had people that have had it in for over 30 years and people that are in trouble that have had it in. Uh, we had one lady just 10 days ago. 10 days ago, she had it injected, and she's in major league trouble, all infected, and she's having surgery next week. Wow, so only, only, in, ten, only in 10 days, pretty much. Oh, no, you, you, can, you can have trouble with this immediately. We had one patient, she was injected, and one hour later, she was calling us up crying, and we had to do surgery on her three days later to get it out. Man. This is ugly, bad stuff. So let me explain. The average cost, and we tell this to everyone that calls on the phone, including the young woman you're talking about. The average cost is between fourteen dollars to $25,000 plus. It depends upon how bad it is, mm-hmm. if you've tried to take it out before, where it's migrated to, and what's going on, how many hours in the operating room. She, we give a fair quote to every single patient. You know, your, okay. your fee may be $10,000, but the other fee may be 17500 I had a young lady two weeks ago. Her fee is $38,000. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It's right. an extremely difficult surgery for the doctor. Not only was it in her gluteus, it moved into the pubic area and to the front of her thighs, and it was affecting her lymph nodes. These are not cookie-cutter surgeries. They're not cut and dry. They're complex surgeries where the surgeon has to have the talent and the brains enough to think, what am I doing to correct this to make the patient better? To, gotcha. to get it all, uh, the, most of it out. We can never guarantee 100%. Okay? Gotcha. And unfortunately, like Anivia, she had eight surgeries. We're getting the majority of it out in one surgery. 
So, I will not so, do, you, so do you feel anyone. like if um, do you feel like if uh, Anivia would have first came to you, firstly, you think you guys would have had to eliminate all those surgeries that she had to have? Uh, Anivia's case was extreme because um, from the photographs, it it broke through the skin and it was already um, necrotic skin. Uh -huh. And uh, and I believe she lived up north and found uh, the best doctor at the time for her. Okay. Um, if she had come to us, Dr. Gallerani, you know, we've seen Anivia, and, uh -huh. and Anivia has spoken about that. Um, Dr. Gallerani can help her now, but we could have helped her in the beginning, yes. So she, would, so she wouldn't and, have to have went through all of that that she previously went through? Uh, we can't speak to how many different surgeries because we don't know the, the full medical extent of what was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't have those medical records. Dr. Gallerani has not laid eyes on them. Gotcha. Um, but eight surgeries, unnecessary. Gotcha. Okay. We, we try to do it in <laughs> one, possibly two on some people, but um, we've never done eight surgeries on any patient. Okay, and also, Mary, I have um, a one more actual question for you. Now, sure. on a scale of one to ten, uh, the patient that we're actually speaking about, on a scale of one to ten, where where would you say um, that scale was at in terms of severity and just something that can kind of be lived with for a while? Uh, I, I'm going to defer to the posting that she put out there because I I I can't. We have HIPAA. Okay. And I will not violate HIPAA for anyone. I will never do insurance fraud. We will never do anything wrong. But I, uh, let, let me just make a statement. Anyone that's listening to this that's had illegal injection, whether they're in your face, your lips, your breasts, your hips, your gluteus, your vaginal area, your calves, it must come out. It is 1,000% toxic to your body. It is poison to your body. And whether you have a reaction today, next week, a year from now, or five years from now, you will, you will, W-I-L-L, -L, have a reaction. It is coming. It is toxic to your body. Because those um, things, things are definitely not meant to be there, correct? Correct. It's just like... Um, <sighs> It's a it's a foreign substance to your body. Your body's going to fight it 24-7. That's why the patients are exhausted. They're anxious. Uh, a lot of anxiety, night sweats, mm -hmm. restlessness, irritability, uh, tingling up and down their legs, up and down their back. They don't know how to diagnose this. They have pain in their joints. So what they do is they go to their primary. Their primary sends them to a rheumatologist. The rheumatologist says, oh, you must have lupus, or you must have Lyme disease, or you have autoimmune disease, and then just gives them some medication. What the girls and the, the, the men and the transgenders are all missing the point, tell your doctor what you have. They go to the emergency room, oh, I have a rash on my butt and it's hot. Well, they're, they're diagnosing them with cellulitis. And that's what we've seen. But they forget to tell the emergency room doctor or they forget to tell the physician or the, P the PA that's seeing them in the emergency room, oh, by the way, I had a legal butt shot six years ago. And, you know, I have to tell you, a lot of people forgot that they had it. They wow. come in to see us and they say, wow, yeah, I did go with my girlfriend to Columbia for a weekend and oh, I didn't think that was bad what they put in. But now it's causing a whole host of problems. So, well, that's, well, that's definitely that's definitely good to bring the awareness. Um, like you said, some people may forget, or some may just actually not really want to tell exactly what happened because you know, of course, they'll probably right. get you know sent and referred well, out to I other will places. Tell you, yeah, the, the 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 majority of the girls that don't want to tell is because they're going into the emergency rooms under their insurance, and when uh. the insurance companies find out. It was illegal injections. They're going to kick the bill back to them. And you could speak to Anivia about that. Because gotcha. insurance companies do not cover anything that you've done for a cosmetic enhancement now that you're going to remove it. 
um, and we will not get involved with the insurance companies for that. Mm-hmm. I've actually worked extremely hard, and I and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And Dr. Gallerani thanks you for bringing awareness to these people. Uh, anyone that's had the shots, they need to be honest with yourself. Get it out, okay? There are solutions. Call the office. Come and see us. But be honest to your primary care doctor, to your cardiologist. Um, I'm going to bring up one more story. We had a patient. She had liposuction. She had silicone in her butt. She told the doctor, I have silicone in my butt. He said, no problem. I could lipo it out. But, you know, while you're on the table, let me put a little in your face and let me put a little in your breast. Well, both of her breasts turned black. The side of her cheek on her face turned black because what he did was liposuction out the silicone and re-inject it all over her body. So they did liposuction. They caught the silicone in the cannula, re-injected it into her buttocks, re-injected it into her breast for a little enhancement and her cheeks on her face. Well, she wound up in a big university hospital. Um, and they diagnosed her because they saw foreign cells. They diagnosed her with stage four bilateral breast cancer. And they wanted to do bilateral mastectomy on her. Her girlfriend brought her to us. And in the course of three hours, we finally got the truth out of her. Oh, yeah, I did have lipo. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, I told him that I had silicone. Oh, he did put it in my breast, and he put it in my face. Well, now we have a diagnosis, and then we have a solution. So you have to have a diagnosis first, and then a solution to the problem. So there's never a problem. There's always a solution. And, and, and anybody that has this, think positive. There's a way to get it out. And you don't have to go through eight, nine, ten surgeries. That's ludicrous. Right. So a, def- a good songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> so def- I uh, like definitely ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely, Marianne. So, so you know, some of the women that may be listening to this uh, video or watching this video, um, how do they get in t- contact with their office if they are, you know, going through things like that and they don't really know who to reach out to? They, they just call our office and, okay. and, you know, there are other doctors um, that are removing it in the proper way around the United States. So do your homework, find the proper doctor. If you want to come to Dr. Gallerani, we've done thousands of these. He knows what he's doing. Call the office, <clears throat> ask for me or my assistant where they speak English, they speak Spanish. We have a girl that speaks Russian. Um, uh, Creole, call the office, 305-933-6545. I hope that wasn't a bad plug for us, but just get information. Even if you don't, even if you don't come in, I am more than happy to talk to you on the phone about your situation Mm -hmm. and explain things. Um, After your show the other day, and thank you for putting things on the air, And after Tasha Kay's show on Wine with Tasha Kay, I had many phone calls. I had a young lady that was in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Um, She had a baby six months ago. And she's had problems ever since she gave birth to the baby. Why? Your immune system attacked the product in her butt, trying to protect her and the baby. Gotcha. Wow. So... Now she's had problems. Other young ladies go to the emergency room. They don't know what to give them. They put them on an antibiotic uh, or they, they tell them, you know, here, go take a pack of steroids and call your local plastic surgeon to have this removed. Well, if the local plastic surgeon doesn't have the patient population like we do and the experience to take it out, you're going to put yourself in more harm than good. Make sure, and there are board-certified plastic surgeons that know what they're doing. Go to a board-certified plastic surgeon, but if they don't have the experience in taking this out, go to the expert, which is Dr. Gallerani. 
He okay. works very hard. He does his research. And um, by the way, Lionel, I want to do. I want to tell everyone this: we are doing a research project. So if women want to, women, men, transgenders want to get in on the research project, please call me or please email the office, which is um, Medici Front Desk uh, at gmail.com. Uh, email us. Tell us that you want to participate in the research project. Uh, you will help other women. Okay, that's that's definitely and that's definitely good information. Mm-hmm. All right, Marianne. So we definitely thank you for uh, uh, being a part of the show here and shedding some light yeah. on these new foundings. And um, you know, definitely, one, uh, definitely. One more great. thing from me. Uh -huh. One more thing from me. The young lady that you're all speaking about. Okay. We want the best for her. Uh, she's made mention that we're mad at her. I'm not mad at anybody. We don't get mad at any patient. We're here to help. If she calls us tomorrow and wants our help, we are here to help. We're not here to hinder anybody, to turn people away. You know, people have to qualify for surgery mentally, mm -hmm. physically, emotionally, and financially. Okay. But gotcha. I've never received any money from a GoFundMe. We don't accept any money from a GoFundMe. People have to be ready for the surgery. And Dr. Gallerani is the expert at removing it. Okay. All right, Marianne. So we definitely thank you for being a part of the show. And we thank you for clearing up so many things that we were, you know, the viewers would definitely want to know about. Because, of course, you know, okay. th the story's been going well, as you may know, and a lot of people have been saying different things. So, you know, that's that's why we do these type of videos. Mm -hmm. So we kind of clear the air and get the truth uh, mm -hmm. behind everything. So we definitely right. thank you for being a part of the Lionel B. Show. And I want I want to thank Anivia. Anivia is a great resource for um, anyone that has the illegal injection. She understands it uh, because of the her past and uh, getting it removed. So uh, reach out to Anivia. Uh, she's a wonderful resource. Tasha Kay is a wonderful resource. Um, the internet, if you follow Anivia on the internet, uh, she, she gives pearls of wisdom. And I thank Anivia for helping other people. She's done a great job. 